<laughs> Nico, how does it feel doing all of this? You know, open workouts and and having this press attention. Now you're you know you're defending your belt. It feels great. Um, I feel like I'm pretty used to the cameras from the Tough Show, um, but just feeling the atmosphere of today is pretty intense. You know, it's a uh, pretty awesome to know that I can motivate a group of people. But now you're the champion, is that a different type of pressure, a different feeling? No. Um, you know, each time I've won a championship belt, including my UFC belt, I've always redirected my thanks to my heritage and the people who are truly out there struggling through life, you know, and not getting paid for their efforts. So I definitely see that. You know, it's, uh, I feel like Americans especially we love an underdog story, right? But are you sick and tired of hearing questions about being the underdog? <laughs> yes and no. Like I said, it's always been that. Um, I don't really have anything to compare it to because I've always been the underdog. So it's just part of who I am in spirit. <laughs> I wonder if in some way it's a little bit freeing. I mean, this is your first title defense, UFC champion. That's a big deal, right? Mm -hmm. But it feels like the expectations are all on Valentina and what she's supposed to do. Is it freeing at all, knowing that maybe there aren't these massive expectations for you to, to live up to. Yeah, I have nothing to prove and everything to gain. I'm the champ, but I didn't spend my whole life trying to get this one thing, you know? I spent my whole life fighting to be the best, best person that I can be, to be the person that my little sister can look up, up to and actually try to aspire to be, instead of just uh, some random girl <laughs> floating around, you know, making a living off the, as much, you know, like, just, being who they think they should be, opposed to who they actually can be. Do you ever get frustrated? I mean, the, the people that you beat on the show and in the final, I mean, those were legitimate contenders, legitimate proven <laughs> fighters. You didn't beat just up-and-comers. So do you ever sit back and get frustrated and say, why, why are people not giving me credit for the wins that I got? No, I mean, I made history, you know? That's in itself, to me, rewarding, very rewarding. I'm the first ever women's UFC flyweight champ. First Native American UFC flyweight champ, or UFC champ in, in uh, general, and then my wins in the Tough Show were great. You know, I think those were like kind of my best showings in terms of MMA fighting, even though they didn't go on my record. Um, and that's all captured on film. So, if I, you know, if anybody needs to remember that, then they can rewatch it. I'm happy with it. <laughs> and, and last thing for me, I mean, you've had such a positive attitude all along, but I wonder, I mean, were there any days, because I feel like your character was almost called into question along the way here, you know what I mean? Like, w were there days that you didn't have this positive attitude and that you were upset at the way you were being treated or looked at? You know, there was the time where I could literally not talk because I had stitches in my tonsil, um, in my throat due to the tonsillectomy, so that was pretty frustrating. Um, you know, I, I couldn't like I couldn't talk and couldn't get my voice out there so that period was pretty frustrating but other than that you know I have the I have the power and I have the will to push through and persevere and I think the belt shows that. Nika you said in a previous interview I heard that you were going to finish her in the first round and you said you're probably <laughs> going to get asked that question a ton of times it might be different every time but but what is the key in your opinion to to beating Valentina? Um, just being able to be as Reactive as she is, you know, she's kind of a counter striker, um, counter fighter, so not necessarily playing her game, but keeping that in mind, you know, I like to kind of be stealthy myself. Um, I think my strength is my, is my um, power, is my, sh my strength. Um, so I don't know, this fight can literally go anywhere and I'd be really, really happy if it went to the ground, obviously. I've been a purple belt for three years, but I've been, working on my stand-up and that's become well-rounded and a lot more fun these with days. This, with this being a new division, are you mindful of the girls up at 135 and down at 115 that, you know, they're, they're all potentially looking at this division as the, the new place to be for those that have either been, you know, the smaller in their division or, or cutting too much weight and, you know, there's, there's a lot of potential contenders ahead. Absolutely. I feel like this division is just going to keep growing and growing and growing. Um, a lot of 115ers are going to move up, which I think is smart, you know. It's smart to have weight classes like this, especially for the females, because just about our biology, sometimes it's like hard, you know, it's harder for us to make the weight. So if we have options for these weight classes, it's going to make it more fun and it's going to make our MMA careers um, have a longer uh, longevity. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.